Good evening, everyone. Hey, welcome to uh, Church at the MHC. So thankful that you're tuning in with us tonight. Hey, um, get your prayer requests in. If you need prayers, uh, get those in the comment section. We want to pray for you. We want to love on you. We want to um, be there for you. So get those in. Hey, um, if you're listening tonight, who in the world are you? This is a series that Pastor Don has been preaching for quite a few weeks now, and um, he is going into the series. Oh, I encourage you to go back and listen to the old ones from times past and uh, really take a hold of what he's doing. He's getting us ready for something, yes, for the summer, but he's getting us, even if you're not going to be able to join us this summer, he's getting us ready to go out and do the Great Commission, which we're all called to do, and we're all called to do even now, you know, within within the time we got born again, we're, we're all called to the Great Commission, which is to reach the lost, heal the sick, raise the dead, do those works of Jesus. Um, so, um, tune in go back and listen to to the past messages and and really dive into that hey don't forget that this friday weather permitting we will be at the luby stage for prayer there was just a few of us there on friday and it was great um a really great time to get us get feet on the ground to get used to being there for them to get used to being uh, for us to be there um so i encourage you join us for that be praying you know prayer to me is just as much of a seed as financially sowing a seed so i encourage you to be praying to be sowing into this ministry with prayer and into what we're doing this outreach this summer with prayer um, as well and then also don't forget we'll be here Sunday morning 10 a.m. for church at the MHC um, so join us for that as you know Pastor Don always brings a powerful message and and so does Pastor Nathan when he ministers um, they always bring a powerful message look I know these two guys personally and they're amazing. I, I hope I know Pastor Nathan personally because I'm married to him. But what I'm saying is I both know I know that they both take the time and they really put time into each of their messages, not just to create something that is going to be meaningful to you, but they want to create something that they really know is from God. And so they take the time to really sow into that to really pray into what message to preach on, what to say, what to do. Um, they, but they both do that. So I encourage you guys to be in-house, to hear what Holy Spirit is saying through um, our pastors, Don and, and Pastor Nathan, and really hear what they have to say because I know that God is speaking to each of them um as well so get here on sundays tune in on tuesdays for tuesday night healing school with pastor nathan uh 7 or 6 30 p.m wednesdays at 7 p.m sundays at 10 a.m get in the house you guys there's just something about being in the house you can't get fellowship from watching online but you can get it from being in the house so i encourage you to get here and get uh ready for that um we just got a few minutes here I want to remind you guys that if you need prayer for anything, you can leave them in the comments, but you can also give us a call. Maybe the broadcast is over. Maybe um, you just don't want to leave it out publicly. I get that. I understand. So you can give us a call at 573-216-1871. Leave a voicemail. Uh, that will um, get us to... That will one of our prayer team members will call you back and pray for you that way or you can uh <coughs> i'm sorry i actually remember that prayer at two guys in bible i don't believe is up and running yet but that we are working on that but you can you know message pastor don pastor nathan myself pastor michelle and we'll we'll make sure to pray for you guys i mean that's what we're here for um that's what we do um, also, text to give. You can text to give at 888-546-7317. Text to give and the amount, too. We always want to put that out there because, you know, we always want to give you the opportunity to sow into what we're doing here, to sow a seed and what and what uh, um, if God tells you to do that. Um, so 
<laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so anyways, we uh, love you guys. Let me just close this out with some prayer. And then we will uh, get into George and the worship team. So Father God, I just thank you for tonight. I thank you for the word that's being spoken tonight. Father, I just thank you that it just doesn't become just head knowledge, but revelation knowledge, Father. Father, if these people aren't filled with your Holy Spirit, fill them tonight, Father. If they don't know who you are tonight, Father, I thank you that you are showing them who you are. That you are making yourself known to them. And Father, I thank you that um, you are showing up in their, in their life in their finances, in their relationship, in their bodies, Father. I thank you that you're showing up in every area and that they can look at their life and be like, there's no way, but God, there's no way that I was able to pay that bill, but God came through. There's no way I was able to see my my body restored, but God, I just thank you that, that, that they are able to do that tonight. And I'll, tonight's message that you are speaking to them, revelation knowledge. And I thank you for it in the name of Jesus. We love you guys. Hey, uh, reach out to us if you need anything. I'm so thankful you're tuning in tonight. Don't forget about Sundays, um, 10 a.m., Wednesdays, 7 p.m., and of course, Tuesdays, online only, 6.30 p.m. We would love to have you guys join us for those things. And uh, just stay in contact with us. We love you guys. You guys are family. And uh, don't forget that next Wednesday, actually, let me put this out there, is not just Wednesday Church, but it is our Seder Mill. So join us in-house for that. We love you guys. Now we're going out to George and the team. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Good evening, MHC. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We praise your name, God. We praise your name, Jesus. Come on, let's stand. Let's worship. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, just lift your hands tonight. Come on, give him praise, give him glory, give him honor. Hallelujah. Come on, don't stop. Come on, give him praise and glory tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Whoa. Come on, it's good to worship God. It's good to praise Him, amen? Oh, come on. Come on, let's worship tonight. Come on. Come on, clap. Oh, I've got a river living water fountain never will run dry it's an open heaven your releasing we will never be denied come on cause we're stirring up deep deep well stirring up deep deep waters we're gonna dance in the river, dance in the river, stirring up deep, deep wells, stirring up deep, deep waters. We're gonna jump in the river, jump in the river. Deep cries out, deep cries out to you. So deep cries out, deep cries out to you. So we cry out, we cry out to you, Jesus. Come on. Oh, I've got a river, living water, fountain, that never will run dry. Come on. It's an open heaven, your releasing, we will never be denied. Because we're stirring up deep, deep wells, 
stirring up. Come on. Cause it's stirring up deep, deep well. Stirring up deep, deep waters. We're gonna dance in the river. Dance in the river. Stirring up deep, deep well. Stirring up deep, deep waters. We're gonna jump in the river. Jump in. So deep cries out, deep cries out to you. So we cry out, we cry out to you, Jesus. Come on, deep cries out, deep cries out to you. So deep cries out, deep cries out to you. So we cry out, we cry out to you, Jesus. Come on, we're falling. Come on, we're falling into deeper waters. Go to the left, and if it goes to the right, go to the right. We're gonna dance, 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 dance in the rhythm. Dance, 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 everybody. Goes to the left, go to the left, goes to the right. We're gonna jump, we're gonna jump, 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 jump in the rhythm. Jump, 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 everybody. If it goes to the left, go to the left, and if it goes to the right, go to the right. We're gonna dance. If he goes to the left, we'll go to the left, and if he goes to the dance, we'll come on, the we're gonna dance, 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 If he goes to the left, we'll go to the left, and if he goes to the right, jump, come on, we're gonna jump, 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 Go to the right, we're gonna dance, 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 dance in the rear. Dance, dance. Oh, come on, one more time. Stop, come on. Go to the left, and if it goes to the right, go to the right. We're gonna shout, shout, shout. So deep cries out, deep cries out to We cry out, we cry out to Jesus. Come on, one more time. Deep cries out, deep cries out to you. Deep cries out, deep cries out to you. So we cry out, we cry out to Jesus. Oh, come on. Woo. Come on, lift up a shout of praise tonight. <laughs> Come on, dance, jump. <laughs> you don't want to see me dance. I'd rather people stay. I'm not a good dancer. No. Come on. Hey, guys, welcome everybody to Wednesday night church. Who's thankful to be here tonight? It's nice being here, man. I'd rather be here than at home or any other place. Why? Because when the word gets preached, guess what? That is an opportunity to grow, to renew our mind. This is where miracles happen. Amen? Amen. It is the Midwest Healing Center, God of miracles the one that we're worshiping tonight with that being said guys every tuesday we are teaching on to on healing school on healing my goodness 
But we're doing it every Tuesday, same time, 6.30 p.m. The only change up is we're doing it online only. Honestly, it's kind of been weird doing it online only, but it's been kind of nice just because I've, I feel like I'm just like having just a, a conversation. It's been very calm, but I like it because there's been a lot of revelation flowing through this. If you guys did not listen last night, we talked about uh, ministering from heaven. You know, the Bible says that we are seated with him in heavenly places. So we're ministering from somewhere. Why not where we're seated? That brings a whole new uh, idea on how we minister healing because we're not trying to get it to come down. We're just releasing of where we are. So that's what we talked about last night. Every Tuesday, 6.30 p.m., online only. And then every Wednesday, just like tonight, of course, online and in person, 7 o'clock. Guys, Pastor Don is doing a series on who in the world are you? And it's very important that we find out who we are. So when they ask, we're not sitting there taking a step back wondering who we are. We just confidently know that we're sons and daughters. And sons and daughters look just like Jesus and they act just like Jesus. And we should expect results just like Jesus expected. So that's where we're going with that because it's gearing us up for the summer. Guys, we're almost here. I mean, you guys are excited for the summer. Come on, man. I, I, I mean, you guys have ever led anybody to the Lord. There is nothing that compares to that. There, it's, I, I couldn't even put it into proper words, the, the feeling that it's almost just like when that happens, you just realize that there is a calmness of this is what I was created for. Guys, we have an opportunity to do this this summer in a place to where it's known as Party Central. Let's go there. Let's um, do whatever we can to escape the world's reality for us in that moment. But what they don't know is they're going to come and they're going to have an encounter with real life sons and daughters. And we're going to be able to bring them hope in a time that they need hope. So I need you Friday here from 6 30 to 7 30 we're going to be at the luby stage in lake ozark down in the strip we're going to be praying but at the same time we're going to be getting very comfortable with our surroundings and i know one of the first couple of times that we went we were able to minister to people and walk around it was actually the um saint yeah saint patrick's day is when we were i mean it, it was it was packed down there and people were all over and if you did not minister to someone well it's not because they weren't there they were in front of us and it was a great opportunity so we want you to hook up with us 6 30 to 7 30 this friday weather permitting will be here but i've already looked it's going to be beautiful outside so we want you there and then of course every sunday 10 a.m church at the mhc guys where we love the hell out of people's lives how many of you guys have ever had some hell in your life before it wasn't fun it wasn't fun. Whether it was maybe bills piling up, a symptom in your body, or just torment in your mind, whatever it was, if it didn't look like heaven, it looked like something, and it wasn't fun. But there's a lot of people out there in the world that they need to know that God loves them, and it's going to happen between me and you going out there and telling them just that. So bring them to church. You guys have always heard the thing that... Um, We can advertise all we want on Facebook and social media, but did you know the number one reason and way that people come to church is, raise your hand, say it's me. me. Because whether they like it or not, a lot of times they don't want to turn someone down. So when they're coming out of, well, I don't want to hurt their feelings, God knows what he's doing. All we got to do is get them in here. Amen? So we're going to be doing that. We're going to be inviting people to church because how else are we going to get to 300? Huh? It's going to come from word of mouth. It's also going to come from this summer because they're going to hear something and it's going to hear, they're going to hear heaven, but they're going to see heaven through me and you. But we want to invite people to church. Guys, the Seder Passover meal. How many of you guys have signed up for that yet? Pretty much everybody in here. It's kind of bright up here. But guys, the last day to sign up for that is next Tuesday, the 16th. That is the last day to sign up. So there is a sign up sheet out in their lobby. That is for an appropriate side dish. If you don't know, go in side dish, not side chick. Okay. (laughs) Do not bring your side chick. That is not a good thing. (laughs) Don's like, can you just do announcements and be done? (laughs) Bring an appropriate side dish guys. If you heard me right on that. Okay. Guys, next Wednesday, we will be here 6.30 p.m. Guys, um, it was an amazing time last year. It was very intimate, but I I loved just the the simplicity of just being here and enjoying like the Last Supper meal. It was was just, 
It was very intimate, very special. I want you guys to be here. From the food, from the scripture reading, Michelle did an amazing job. And it was neat because as she was reading all the scripture and as we were partaking in all of it, it took you back like just like you were there. And I loved it. So we want you to be a part of it. It's $5 a person. We need you to sign up just so we know that we have enough food for everybody and a proper head count. But other than that, guys, we want you to be able to give to the ministry. Guys, we're doing a lot of big things in this ministry. How many of you guys have had an opportunity to see the drum set back there that we've gotten? It's nice, isn't it? Guys, we still need, help me with the type of symbols. Sure. Zildjian symbols. That is a brand. But we need... Yeah, okay, there we go. Guys, we need the uh, the top symbols. We have all the bottom part. We need all those symbols, which is what? Total of five? Uh, well, just three. Just three. Okay, we need that. We want to be able to get some nice ones because that is a very nice drum set. We lack that. And um, if you want to sew into that, we would love it. You guys are sewing into good things because that drum set's going to go everywhere that that tent goes. And whenever we go somewhere and we minister, that drum set's going and we're going to be ministering to people. Because how many of you guys enjoy the worship here? Well, that drum set allows us to take that worship everywhere else that we go. So we want you to be able to sew into that. With that being said, you can text to give to one 888 Five four six seven three one seven. Again, that is one eight 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 five four six seven three one seven. Or you can donate online at www.twoguysinabible.com. For those of you guys in here, you know the one in the back and the three up here, and we're gonna get back into worship. All right. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Try to get my energy back for a minute. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's stand. Let's get back into worship tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Come on, let's raise a hallelujah tonight. Amen. Amen. Come on, we raise a hallelujah to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Come on, just lift your hands. We, we praise your name, Jesus. We raise a hallelujah, the highest praise. Hallelujah. Let us see more of you, Father. Let us experience more of you, Jesus. Hallelujah, in Jesus' mighty name. Come on. Come on, clap. You sing, I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. Come on, every voice. I'm gonna see in the middle of the Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the king is alive. Come on. Darkness, please. 
Come on. I raise a hallelujah in the middle of the mystery. I raise a Hallelujah. 
right, at the count of three, we're going to shout hallelujah loud enough for them to hear you over at Reds. <laughs> All right, you ready? One, two, three. Hallelujah! Even on a Wednesday, take that, Satan. All right. Praise God. It is funny to me, I was talking to, uh, the other day I ran into um, Jeff, uh, what is Jeff's last name, like, um, Corpening, across the street. You know, they have the, the landscaping business over here, and he's like, man, I can hear you guys, and they're getting fired up in there. I can hear them drums pounding, and I was like, well, good, good for you. So you can hear them better if you came in here, but that's all right, that's, right? We're in a series titled, Who in the World Are You? That is the question. So many people today, they are lost, and... Uh, not just those without Jesus, we're talking about those that are born again that still seem to kind of be bumping around the world a little bit, and they're just not quite sure what their place is in this whole deal. Uh, they don't know who they are, so what happens is they, uh, we begin to a- adapt or adopt these perceptions that people place on us, what everybody else says, and then of course we know that drives behavioral patterns, we start to act that way because it's what is expected, and um, We see this in Christianity. It's really not subject to any denominational background whatsoever. Uh, A whole bunch of folks that are born again, Holy Ghost baptized, might even speak in tongues that are struggling with where they fit in this whole deal. We saw that with the children of Israel. They've just been told they are God's chosen people, led out of 400 years of slavery slavery by miraculous signs. I mean, just amazing things taking place, uh, delivered. Just God just kept showing up, showing up, showing up like he does. And you're going to have this promised land, and they go in there, and they see the promise, and it's all true, and it's everything that God said that it was, and all of a sudden, they weren't living out of the truth of who they actually were. They're living out of perception, and they said, we cannot have the promise because we're grasshoppers in our own sight. And what happened was they went back to that old trauma. Everything that they had been told, and so we always say this, they got out of slavery, but the slavery didn't get out of them. And they brought that with them, and it affected them. And so they were going to allow these perceptions to keep them from a promise. The truth is, they were the children of God. Uh, But what they saw was, we are grasshoppers. We're grasshoppers. And so we have a whole generation of believers right now, I think, because of perceptions. They don't really think that God has accepted them in the way that he actually has. And so they hold on to insecurities and past issues because, uh, well, people are very quick to remind you of them. (laughs) You know, they're telling you who in the world you are. That's what they like to do. And so what takes place is the church gives off this idea, well, you just need to be a part of a gathering. You know, not really an individual necessarily. Uh, kind of do as the herd does. Get with the program. I was never good at getting with the program. Right? Just fit in. Go with the flow. And for most of us, it just doesn't really fit with who we are totally. Um, some of it's okay, but God made you very unique. And he wants you to be you. He just wants you to be the version that he knows you can be. He wants you to live in this fullness of the stature of Christ. That's really who he wants you to be. But individually, no two will look the same. And and the church is trying to make everybody, I think, kind of look the same, a cookie-cutter deal here. And that's not what God wanted at all. But when you don't know who you are, then you will begin to— I know this because I went to Rama Bible Training Center, and you're raising up all these little hungry ministers that think they're going to go out and do something. And because none of us knew who we were, right? This is like you're getting spoon-fed this stuff you started noticing that everybody was acting like their favorite minister. Because that's who taught your classes, were these ministers, and they were amazing. But you could start seeing that people were preaching like them. (laughs) And you're like, I've never heard you talk that way before ever. (laughs) You know, I just, what was that? You know, just, you could see the mannerisms, you could see it. They were just trying to find something, trying to find some kind of an identity instead of being okay in their own skin. And just being who they were and so we're very unique and we talk about family and and how we you know the influences uh, who we are we talk about jobs we talk about money we talk about denominations geographical locations education and that's kind of what we're putting out there that's going to tell people how far you're going to go you know what have you studied what have you done who are you what have you what are you doing now we got a whole bunch of spiritual grasshoppers and not promised land possessors but we're looking to change that because we're looking into the mirror of the word of god and what we really discovered is the mirror does not lie it does not lie so we got to find out what the mirror is showing us tonight and and also recognize that mirror that the world's trying to shove in your face and what they're trying to get you to look like and so i'm not trying to get psychological on you tonight but there are three factors that this world says will, will determine what kind of person that you are or will become. 
and they're called determinisms. This is what they call this. So there's genetic determinism, there's psychic determinism, and there's environmental determinism. And again, the reason that they call it determinism is because they say you cannot escape these. This is what every man, woman, and child, these three factors will determine who you end up becoming in this world. It makes you who you are. No way to get away from it. These three things make up who you are, and whether people know it or not, they cast perceptions accordingly to these three determinisms. Stereotypes, old fables, they think they know who somebody is by looking at these three things. And so because I believe, though, that they left one out, what about in Christ determinism? I feel like this is something that messed up that whole thing that they were trying to do right there. Now, yes, in the world, I think we can recognize these three things, absolutely. But I also think what I want us to see tonight is imagining when Christ came into your life how it messed up these three things. That they said, you're on a path this way because this is just how it is. And all of a sudden, Jesus came into your life, and now they're like, well, who in the world are you? We really don't know you. So I believe they left that out. Could it be that there's something that could be injected into mankind that would directly affect this process? I think so. A power, an outside force that could be placed into the life's equations um, and so I like it that it comes in and it doesn't weigh these natural indicators to determine who becomes what. People do this all the time. They're, they're feeling you out from what you're doing here. I like to say this, just never forget the God factor. No matter what is going on, you throw God in the middle of that equation, the answer is going to change every single time. 2 Corinthians five seventeen always tells us something different here. If any man or woman be in Christ, you're a new creature. Old things passed away. Behold, everything has become new. So that sounds like it overrides just about everything else that was going on up to that point. So genetic determinism means you are who you are because of your genes, your genetic makeup. You are who you are because of your mother, your father, uh, your family history. You've heard people say this. Well, it's in their genes. And it's usually in reference to something negative. Well, cancer runs in the family. It's in their genes. They're determined to probably have it because it runs in the family. It's in their genes. And so most of the time, in the light of something bad, and that's because your genetic makeup, this, you're, you know, like they say, you're determined to get cancer, let's say. It just runs in the family. But, of course, we understand not us because we've got healing in our blood. Yeah. Now we have something different. That anointing is what it's called, that power that came in. Praise God. But what if after accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it caused a gene change? What if you were regenerated or regened, if you will, to where now healing comes into your body? So that means the old, it, it just runs in the family, doesn't apply the same way as it used to. Even if grandma had it and mama had it and aunties had it, doesn't mean I'm going to get it. I'm not getting it. It doesn't run through me. It stops here. This is where these things come to die. <laughs> this generation is where all those things come to die. It is not getting past this generation. Any sickness and disease that ran in the family does not run through you. And behavioral traits, alcoholism, drug addiction, um, all the, you know, they're angry, runs in the family. They come from that family. Nope, there's new things like power and love and wholeness. The fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and long-suffering and gentleness and goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. That's what we have now. Totally different. Now, the next one, psychic determinism, means that your identity or behavior and potential are produced by your thinking. And this one's kind of hard to argue because the Bible does talk about that. Um, as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. But what I like about where we're at now is the difference is, is we got something else to think on. Where our minds have been renewed. We didn't know what to think on before. We just thought whatever people threw at you, that's what you think. And now we have something else. And so... Now we have something new in the heart to pull from when it gets into the thinking, and that's where we're at, right? It wasn't always that way, but now when somebody begins to ask us, what do you think about that? At least now we can go to the Bible and let the Bible be our brains. Now we can say, well, I'll tell you what the Word says, because that's what I think, and I'm training myself to think that way. And it's a process. You've got to untrain this thing, and you've got to renew your mind, as Romans says. You've got to renew this thing. And so the Bible has to be the source of my thoughts now, and those thoughts will govern what I'm thinking on. And then what that does is if it governs my thoughts, then it's also going to help what I'm thinking, what I'm saying, what I'm going to do as well. You know, so when people come and say something, well, you know, I think I'm healed. That's what I think. Man, did you hear what that doctor said? What do you think? I think I'm healed. I think I'm whole. I think I'm set free. I think Jesus paid the price, and the price was enough. That's what I think. It gives us something else that changes this whole thing. 
I think I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Why do you say that? Well, look in the mirror. It doesn't lie. So my thoughts don't have to be formed and fashioned by what others say about me. I have the mind of Christ. Environmental determinism is, of course, means that you are what you are because of your surroundings, where you were brought up, how you were brought up in that environment, the influences in those surroundings determining your future. You ever heard him say they came from the wrong side of the tracks? That's what they're talking about. They've already put that on people because they grew up in poverty or the wrong side of town or the wrong side of the tracks. That's what they're talking about here, this environmental thing. That's what's going to determine who you are. They tried this with Jesus. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Can anything good? They, they tried to do it to Jesus. They tried to say, man, there are a bunch of dogs down there. He's, he's no good. Come and see. They tried this with Jesus, and they said, what? You're just a carpenter's son, Right? I mean, they, they tried this with him all the time. We know your brothers and your sisters. We know where you're from. But again, with in Christ determinism, we now have a supernatural connection that we know reaches beyond our local geographical area. And uh, really now in Christ, even if we may feel stuck in a spot possibly, uh, when we look in Acts 4.23, and being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. And so I like this because now we're able to find our own company truly find our own company and let me say this that doesn't mean you're going to find them in a church not everybody that says i'm a christian is your own company right. no they, they might make it to heaven i'm not questioning their salvation i think it's very important in this season if you hear nothing else tonight watch who you're with watch who you're letting in your life be very 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 guarded and careful in this season use some discernment if there's red flags, listen to them. Listen to them. You have to. You don't have to understand them, but you need to listen to them, right? We've all been there. We've all looked back in hindsight, and we're like, ah, I knew I shouldn't have. There was something. There was something, you know. Be very careful. Be very careful who you let speak into your life as well in this season, right? These men had their own company. They would encourage them, speak into them, comfort them, understood what they were going through, build them back up, and also, what, put a foot in their backside to say, you got to get back out there, though. They would push them. You're going to get back out there. I know you just got beat. Praise God. Let's patch you up, but we got to get you back out there. So with this new determinism, it cross-contaminates all the natural ones, and it finds its way into every area of your life. That is the God factor. So in Christ now means the 2 Corinthians 5, 17 said, old things have passed away. That means that we don't have any connection to that old any longer. It's not there. Those shameful things that we've done, past sin and attitudes and actions, the past lives, the way that we lived them, walked in this world, none of that has an attachment to you any longer. It's dead. Don't let people try to tie you to that anymore. I remember you when that guy's dead. You didn't go to his funeral because I did. He's dead that guy's dead he was crucified with christ that guy is gone right the wade translation says the original conditions have passed away they've been replaced by new conditions right your conditions look way more favorable now the deans says it this way a true christian is not merely a man altered but a man remade i like that one and i think we go back by this too quick you're not just new but the old is gone can somebody say thank you jesus the old is gone i mean glory to god they can't hold that against you anymore that guy is dead he is not, dead men don't pay for sins they're dead i think dead men don't pay taxes either we need to look into that <laughs> glory to god get you coming and going one way or another <laughs> yeah, that's my religious belief i've been crucified with christ i'm not filling that form out this year right your past is dead and gone buried with jesus right it hung on a cross and it died and what it says that we rose together with him praise god fresh and new you know, it's like when God told Jeremiah to go down to the potter's house in Jeremiah 18 and see if I can take a vessel that's been marred and make it over again. You know, and he said, I can, I can do that. Also, just like with new wineskins, right? I praise God. And I really do see that in the body of Christ, that we're getting new wineskins because there's new wine for this season. And I believe that. I really do. I really believe what we're coming into, we're, we're going to have to have the new wine to do what we're going to do. Praise God. And, you know, hey, they all like to drink down there. Well, they're going to see something because we're going to be acting a fool for sure for Christ. But people living from past experiences and those things that took place. And um, yes, it's true that those things happened, but that doesn't mean that's who you are. That's not who you are. So to be in him doesn't do away with the acts that took place, but it definitely breaks that chain that attached you to the abuses in your life. It kind of, it cuts that sin umbilical cord that's always trying to feed into you to say, remember when. I, I don't want to remember that. 
I'm moving on. I'm cutting that off. So granny, she's passed since, but she was so attached to certain things in her life. She, this woman died angry at people who were already dead. She outlived them all and was still ticked at them. She wanted them to come back so that she could be mad at them. This is what this woman's life was like. It was miserable. 50 years ago, they're dead, and, and she's still mad up to her death. And that's what some people do, right? They, I mean, she was just so upset she couldn't let it go. But we got to make up our minds tonight that forgiveness isn't always about letting somebody else off the hook. It's definitely about setting yourself free. you got to release that thing and let it go. So it's about setting you free. And if you've taken offense, then you took it. I know they were given, but you didn't have to take. And so we got to be really careful. You have to. Don't hold on to that thing. They've moved on, and they don't care. So we can't allow those things to affect you, right? I mean, you look about what about Jesus did in your past. There are prepositions that really help us understand this, for, with, in, by, and through. And so these are the words that we see in the Bible that are always, Jesus is always making that connection with mankind. He's always talking about making this personal connection that he wants us to be together. And not just in the sweet by and by. But we talked about this here a while back, how we're now so one with him that the Bible says our flesh, our bodies are members of Christ. They're members of Christ that we're one spirit with him and we have the mind of Christ. And so we said, that's your whole being, your spirit, soul, your body. It's your whole three-part being. Literally, Christ is saying, I'm trying to transform the whole thing. I want the whole thing. Every, every bit of it. There's a, there's a, you know, it's like if you've ever been to the ocean, there's a bay side and there's an ocean side, right? Bay side and an ocean side. But guess what? What's in the ocean is in the bay. Don't be fooled. Guess how I found out? So we're down there fishing, and one night, me and my brother-in-law at that time, we're going to get this guy's little boat because we're on the bay side. It's calm. It's quiet. It looks like the lake. We grew up on the lake. Let's go fishing at night. So we take this little boat, and it's probably 12 foot long. No motor. We paddle out. We got some lanterns, and we're fishing, and I've got my big old pole out, and all of a sudden, the boat goes, and we're like, we don't have a motor. And my lion is screaming, and I'm hooked into a seven-foot shark in the bay. Because what's in the ocean, it's in the bay. <laughs> it's the same thing. Yeah, so we went for a ride for a while and had to cut it because we couldn't get it in. This thing was pulling us out to the ocean. We were flying, and we're like, we're going to have to row back at some point. We had to cut the line. What's in the bay is in the ocean, but what's in Christ is in you. What's in Christ is in you. Same life, same joy, same power, same authority, same security. It's in you. And again, we called it in Christed, if you will. And uh, 1 Corinthians 6 says that your spirit is joined to the master. Same life, same righteousness, common life. It's that new umbilical cord. It's that IV now of the liquid power of God that's hooked up to us. When we hear the word, when we hear worship, when we pray, it's just pumping something into you, right? pumping something into you and the way that you can help yourselves truly identify in him you got to find those scriptures paul recognized it i loved it and you got to confess them because why truth will make you free and you got to confess these things you got that's how we get stuff done in this uh realm you got to talk it you got to speak it that's what takes the 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 power of the scriptures and brings them off of the page into real life you got to speak them you got to apply them and so I like that the truth will make you free. And so I am, right? Those are some powerful words. And most people are still saying, well, I used to be or I want to be. Well, we don't have any wannabes. But remember, we talked about location. You're not back there anymore. And so we don't have any wannabes. You are present tense. And so when we talk about your identity, your identity in him, um, what does that mean? And I want to try to explain it this way. There was a man. This is a true story. There was a firefighter in California. They had fires sweep through there, and you know how that goes out there. When it hits those trees, it just goes crazy. This man burned his hand, his right hand, so badly that they thought they were going to have to amputate it. And there was a doctor there that had been working on some ideas and some stuff, and he, and he asked permission if he could try this with this particular man to see if he could save his hand because he knew the body's ability to regenerate. He wanted to open up the man's body in a spot where he could place his hand in there and sew it shut and leave it in there and see if the body would heal it. And sure enough, they sewed that thing shut and left his hand in there. And when they took it out, it was fresh skin like a baby after a certain amount of time. And praise God, isn't that amazing? And so God said that man's kind conditions was so bad, we looked like we were going to be amputated. But God had something else in mind. He said, I'm going to cut myself open. Remember, we talked about that, being engrafted into Christ. He was wounded with mankind's condition to receive us into him. 
That's how one he wants us to be. The wounding, right? If I cut myself open, he did that incision was made on that cross and he opened himself up because he wanted us to be a part of him. And now we were well on our way to death and destruction, but God just wasn't willing to allow that to happen. And uh, so once we were placed in him, the healing process began. Acts 17, 28, for in him we live and we move and we have our being. That is that surgery that took place at the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. So once we came out on the other side, we were made whole again, a new birth. We came out alive and whole, just like babes, right? They said, just like babies, babes in Christ. We were brand new, just like babies, nothing held against us. Galatians 2, 20, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live. So we understand crucifixion means there was a death. But again, once dead, like I said, there's no more attachment. There's no more attachment. Dead men don't worry about their past. You were crucified with him. That old you no longer lives, and nobody can hold any dead man to his past sins. They're gone. They're gone. Shortcomings, death releases them from payments. You died, but Christ lives in me. In the life that I now live, I live in the flesh. I like that he said that the life that I'm living now in the flesh, that means not sweet by and by when this happens. He's talking right here and now. In my flesh, today, right now, the life I live in the flesh. He wanted to be sure you knew it was right now. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That means to me that Jesus is never saying to you, you can't. You can't do that. I'm living by the faith of the Son of God. If Jesus did it, I can do it. That means that I'm not trying to find some man-made faith because of my determinisms. What determined it was is Jesus said, you can do it. End of story. That determines what I'm going to do. This is the substitutionary act. This is what Jesus did for you. So we got to get it out of our, our mind that you got to do something to get this. You already did something. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you got it. There's no more to do. You got it. Not based off of anything you could do. It's what he did, and it was a decision. Right? Remember in the garden, Jesus said, if there's any other way, but at that moment when he committed himself, not my will but yours be done, at that moment he opened himself up, and he said, all right, we're going to do it this way. God's will in the matter. Everything Jesus did was for you. It was all set to your credit as though you did it, and he died so you can live, and he took the blows of punishment so we could all walk free from sickness and disease and pain and shame and all of that. So, and, and here's the other thing. In having this identity doesn't mean you lose yours. And I think that some people get really weird about this. Um, some people get so spiritual, they've lost themselves. Yeah. And they feel like they can't be them now because they didn't like them. Right. And they're forgetting that God, again, made each one of us unique, and it's not to get rid of your, your uh, personality or who you are. But some people get so removed from that, their head's in the clouds. You, you can't even make sense of what they're saying. They just get so removed from just being a person on the planet and forgetting that, you know, I still have to use this thing to minister. You know, they get weird about stuff. Don't let that happen to you. God's not looking for that. Um, because you're still you. You just got to be all that you can be and be in him. It gives us the opportunity to be, again, that person that God always wanted you to be individually. And so most people never realize their full potential, who we're really supposed to be, because, again, we're living to these past attachments. I love that Paul wasn't talking about some spiritual stage that he got to, right? Because we're always looking for coming up higher. Levels. We talk about levels. You know, we're coming up higher. We're going to the Mighty Roar Conference higher learning ability next step thing. All the books we read, 10 steps to 7 steps to 3 steps to ain't no step for a stepper, but I'm not a stepper. He's not talking about some spiritual stage that he achieved or some higher spiritual state. He's just talking about straight up identity change, looking in the mirror and recognizing who he looks like now. And, and so the moment you say yes to Jesus, the death of the old man occurs, your crucifixion has taken place. The moment you said yes, the old you died and now you were born again. But this time, now we got Jesus on the inside, new spirit man. So stop raising the dead you. Stop raising that old man. We do it all the time. We all do it. We have opportunities to do it every day. When we get into certain situations, sometimes we resurrect that old guy and ask him, what do you think? Well, surely he stinketh by now. That guy stinks. Leave him there. We don't, we don't want that. The Crestman says, I died when Christ died on the cross. I do not live now, but Christ lives in me. I like one translation that just says, God, Jesus is just using my body. Jesus is using my body. The Jerusalem says, I've been crucified with Christ and live now, not with my own life, but with the life of Christ who lives in me. 
The life I now live in this body, I live in faith, faith in the Son of God who loved me and sacrificed himself for my sake. Ephesians 2, 4 through 6, but God who is rich in mercy, again, remembering that mercy is not for when we've done it all right. Mercy is for when you totally blew it, and God gives it to you anyway. And your God's rich in it. Why? Well, because of his great love, which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, we were made alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised us up together, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And I love that it's by grace that you've been saved, and it's by grace that you can still walk in this salvation every single day. You can walk in it every day. It's grace. And if we died with him, we rose with him as well. Jesus took us with him. And he went to hell, and he went through hell so that you don't have to. That's the old man talking. When we go through natural circumstances in this life, and we're going through hell, well, for one, go on through. Okay, don't stop. Get on through it. But you don't have to. You don't have to deal with things the way that we used to deal with them. You don't have to. We have something else now that we can tap into. And I love that we have the story of the thief on the cross next to Jesus that day. That man was there because he deserved to be there, and he admitted that uh, because he should have been, and he deserved the punishment that day. But I love this because Jesus was already showing us the power of the cross that day. I loved that. The guilty man, you're going to be with me. You're going to be with me. Jesus took identity to a whole other level right there in public to tell a guilty man out of all of them, this guy is going to be with me. He's going to be with me. He told a woman caught in the act of adultery who was guilty, you're with me. Isn't that amazing? You're with me. Guilty as they come. Publicly stood with her and said, I don't accuse you. Took the, the, he took two men, Paul and Silas, when they were in prison, filled with other guilty men that did deserve to be there. Remember they sang praises and the place shook and not just their bands were loosed. Everybody's bands were loosed. All the guilty ones that deserved to be in that prison got set free. That is the power of showing you truly who Jesus is. Setting captives free. The doors were open for all of them. So even when we see the guilt, Jesus always sees the freedom. He's always identifying with freedom. So maybe you did it, whatever it was, maybe, but Jesus identifies in freedoms, not in bondages anymore. So don't allow these determinisms to lock you up and tell you that you're guilty. We've so been programmed, however old we are through these years, we have been programmed that this is the way that life is. Or like we said, it is what it is. Nothing ever is what it is when you have Jesus. It's never just is what it is, ever. So do not allow these things to lock you up. Never allow past sin and guilt to, to uh, hang you back on a cross. Don't do that. Never allow education, geographical location, family history to cause you to be stoned to death, left for dead. Don't let them do that to you, right? You're not guilty. So he stood in the gap. He took your punishment. So here's what I want to do. The Bible says in Job, I shall decree a thing. And it will be established unto me. And so I want you to repeat some things that I'm going to say. Of course, you'll have to believe them. But these are all backed with Bible. So I want you to say this. Say, I am complete in him who is the head over all rule and authority of every angelic and earthly power. Say this. Say, I am alive with Christ. Say, I am free from the law of sin and death. Say, I am far from oppression and will not live in fear. I am born of God and the evil one cannot touch me. I am holy and without blame before him in love. Say, I have the mind of Christ. Say, I have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding say the spirit of God who is greater than the enemy in this world lives in me say I have received abundant grace and the gift of righteousness and I reign in life through Jesus Christ say I have received the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Jesus the eyes of my understanding are enlightened so that I know the hope of having this life in Christ. Say, I have received the power of Holy Spirit and He can do miraculous things through me. I have authority and power over every enemy in this world. Say, I am renewed in the knowledge 
of God and no longer want to live in my old ways or nature. I am merciful. I do not judge others. And I forgive quickly. As I do this, by God's grace, He blesses my life. God supplies all of my needs according to His riches in glory. In all circumstances, I live by faith and extinguish all the flaming darts of the enemy. I can do whatever I need to do in life through Christ Jesus who gives me strength. I am chosen by God who called me out of the darkness and into the light and life of Christ. I am born again. I am spiritually transformed. I am renewed and set apart for God's purpose. I am God's workmanship, created in Christ to do good works that he's prepared for me to do. I am a new creation in Christ. In Christ, I'm dead to sin. My relationship to sin is broken and alive to God. The light of God's truth has shone in my heart and given me knowledge of salvation. As I hear God's word, I'm quick to do what it says. And because of that, I'm blessed in my actions. I am a joint heir with Christ. I am more than a conqueror. I overcome the enemy by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony. I have everything I need to live a godly life and I am equipped to live in his divine nature. I am an ambassador for Christ. I am part of a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. I am the righteousness of God. I have right standing with him. My body is the temple of Holy Spirit. I belong to him. I am the head and not the tail. I only go up and not down in life as I trust and obey God. I am the light of the world. I am chosen by God, forgiven and justified. I have a compassionate heart, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. I'm redeemed, forgiven of all my sins, made clean through the blood of Christ. I've been rescued from darkness and brought into God's kingdom. I am redeemed from the curse of sin, sickness, and poverty. My life is rooted in my faith in Christ. I am called to live a holy life by the grace of God. I am healed and whole in Jesus' name. I am saved by God's grace. I am greatly loved by God. I am strengthened with all power according to his glorious might. I humbly submit myself to God. And the devil flees from me because I resist him in the name of Jesus. Amen. You guys believe that? That's what the mirror says right there. Amen. Why don't you stand to your feet tonight? Father, we thank you for your word, the truth of your word. Lord, that you loved us enough that you wanted us together with you, that you gave us all the tools to be able to do it, Father God. And so, Lord, we just thank you that you continue to give us that revelation of the tools that we have, Father. Lord, that we can continue to walk in the truth of who in the world we are. We are sons and daughters of the Most High God. And Father, we will not apologize. So, Lord, I thank, that, I thank you that you continue to bring that to remembrance in us by your Holy Spirit that we know exactly who we are when we walk out of this place, that we hold our head up high, knowing exactly whose we are and who we are. And Lord, I thank you that this world will recognize it. They'll see it, and they'll want it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise God. You guys have a wonderful week. Walk by that new determinism, amen. amen.
Well, thank you again so much for tuning in to church at the MHC midweek church service. So glad that you were on tonight watching. Hey, uh, I hope tonight spoke to you. Are you determined? Do you have that determinism to walk in these things that God's called you to walk in? Are you determined to see yourself in Christ? Um, and I hope so after tonight. I hope you know who you are in Christ. Um, anyways, we love you guys. Let me just one more chance scan here. I don't see any prayer requests currently, um, but you know, you guys can always reach out to um, the ministry by calling 573 216 1871, or uh, you can, you know, get a hold of Pastor Nathan, Pastor Don, Michelle, myself. You know, any of us, we will be that we would love to be there for you. Anybody in leadership, anybody in the congregation, we it doesn't really matter who, just get a hold of somebody. Don't go through something alone when I mean, you can receive prayer and when you can receive someone to walk through it with you. Um, so get a hold of somebody that I know somebody in the congregation or leadership or any of the pastors here would love to pray for you as well. Um, you can text to give. 888-546-7317 and text the, and give them out to in case you missed out during Pastor Nathan's announcements. Um, we love you guys. Hey, um, tune in Sunday morning for Church at the MHC. And then next Wednesday, we will not have pre or post show because instead we are doing the Seder meal. Um, so if you're local, I encourage you to join in join us uh for that and and celebrate the passover with us next uh wednesday so we will not be on here but then tune in the following wednesday because we'll be right back here for church of the mhc we love you guys hey uh we look forward to seeing you guys on sunday morning uh and if you need anything you remember to reach out we love you guys and have a great rest of your week i'm praying for you